The sun's first light kissed the edges of the horizon, casting a golden glow over St. John's City. The quiet town, nestled comfortably in the embrace of rolling hills, began to stir as the day broke. The streets slowly filled with the sounds of life, children preparing for school, shopkeepers setting up for the day, and the gentle hum of traffic weaving through the main roads. In the heart of this peaceful town stood the police station, a sturdy building that symbolized safety and order for the community. But hey, before we dive into the story, do yourself a favor and pause the video right now. Go hit that like button and let's see if we can make this video reach 1,000 likes. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to your favorite story channel. Also, make sure to ring the notification bell so you never miss out on the latest and weirdest stories. Trust us, you won't want to miss what's coming your way. Now, sit back, relax, and prepare to be amazed as we take you on an unforgettable ride. Don't forget to engage with us in the comments below. We love hearing from you. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Inside, the morning was just beginning. Officers moved about in a relaxed manner, finishing their reports, sharing a few laughs over coffee, and discussing the day's plans. The atmosphere was calm, almost serene, with the sense that nothing could disturb the peace of this early hour. But that peace was shattered suddenly and violently when the station's large wooden doors flew open, allowing a gust of cold air to sweep through the room. Papers fluttered in the breeze and heads turned in unison to see who had burst in so unexpectedly. Standing in the doorway was a young boy, no older than ten, with a wild look in his eyes. His hair was a mess, his shirt clung to him with sweat, and his breath came in sharp, frantic gasps. This was Ricky, and the fear in his eyes was enough to freeze the blood of every officer in the room. Please, you have to arrest my dad, Ricky cried out, his voice trembling with urgency and desperation. The room fell silent, the officers exchanging puzzled glances. Some straightened in their chairs, while others set down their coffee cups suddenly forgetting their casual morning routines. All eyes were on Ricky, the boy who had just turned their ordinary morning upside down. Officer Susan, known for her gentle touch in delicate situations, was the first to move. She approached Ricky cautiously, kneeling down to meet his eye level. Hey there, sweetheart, she said softly, her voice filled with warmth and concern. It's okay, you're safe here. Can you tell me what's wrong? Ricky's eyes welled up with tears and his small frame shook with sobs. He needs to be arrested, he repeated, wiping his face with the back of his hand. The officers closed in around him, their concern deepening as they tried to coax more information out of the distraught boy. Sergeant Mike, a tall, kind-hearted man with graying hair, took charge. He had seen many things in his years on the force, but the raw fear in Ricky's eyes tugged at something deep within him. Ricky, he said gently, we want to help you, but we need to know why you want us to arrest your dad. Can you tell us what happened? Ricky hesitated, looking around at the sea of unfamiliar faces, his fear palpable. But as Sergeant Mike spoke, something in his voice seemed to reach Ricky, and slowly, hesitantly, the boy began to speak. His words were halting at first, but as the story unfolded, the officers listened with growing concern. This wasn't just a case of a child overreacting. There was something much darker hidden in Ricky's story. Ricky spoke of his father's anger, of objects being thrown, of nights spent hiding under the bed as his father's rage echoed through the house. The officers listened in stunned silence, their expressions growing more serious with every word. It was clear this was no ordinary domestic dispute. There was real danger here, and they had to act quickly. But as Ricky continued, the story took an even more unsettling turn. My mom's been gone for a long time, Ricky said, his voice barely above a whisper. Dad says she went on a trip, but she left all her stuff behind. Sergeant Mike felt a chill run down his spine. The pieces of the puzzle were starting to come together, and the picture they formed was alarming. A missing mother a father prone to violent outbursts, and a young boy who was clearly terrified for his safety, this was a situation that required immediate action. The officers quickly sprang into action. Some began making calls to Child Protective Services, while others prepared to visit Ricky's home. 
they needed to assess the situation firsthand and ensure that Ricky was safe. The quiet morning had turned into a race against time and every second counted. As the police car pulled up in front of Ricky's house, the officers were struck by the sight of the worn down home. The windows were grimy, the lawn overgrown, and the whole place seemed to sag under the weight of neglect. This was not the home of a happy family, but one that had seen too much pain. Inside, the scene was even worse. The living room was a mess, with furniture in disarray and evidence of recent chaos scattered everywhere. And there, in the middle of it all, stood Roger, Ricky's father. He looked as disheveled as the house around him, his eyes hollow and tired, his face a mask of confusion as the officers entered. Sergeant Mike approached Roger cautiously, his voice calm but firm. Mr. Davis, we need to talk to you about your son, he said. Roger's reaction was immediate, his defenses went up, and his confusion turned to anger. But the officers had no choice. Given Ricky's story, they had to act. Roger was placed in handcuffs, his protest drowned out by the sound of the metal clicking into place. As they led Roger out of the house, Ricky suddenly broke free from the officer holding him and ran toward his father. I'm sorry, Dad, he cried, throwing his arms around Roger's waist. The officers paused, stunned by the boy's sudden outburst. Sergeant Mike gently pried Ricky away, kneeling down to look him in the eye. Ricky, what's going on? He asked, his voice soft with concern. Ricky sniffled, his tears flowing freely now. I just wanted him to eat, he said, his voice trembling. He hasn't eaten in days, and I thought if he went to jail they'd give him food. The officers exchanged stunned glances. Ricky's words hit them like a punch to the gut. This wasn't about punishment or fear. This was about love, a desperate, misguided attempt by a child to save his father in the only way he knew how. The situation had suddenly become much more complicated. Roger wasn't just a violent man. He was a man who had reached the end of his rope who couldn't even take care of himself, let alone his son. And Ricky, in his innocence, had done what he thought was the only way to help. Back at the station, the officers gathered around Ricky, their hearts heavy with the weight of what they had learned. They knew they had to do more than just arrest Roger. They had to help him and his son. And so they set to work, calling social services, arranging for a temporary foster home for Ricky, and connecting Roger with the help he so desperately needed. As the days turned into weeks, the story of Ricky and his father spread through St. John City. The community, moved by the boy's love and the tragic circumstances of his family, rallied together. Donations poured in, volunteers offered their time, and slowly but surely, the pieces of Ricky's life began to be put back together. Ricky's story didn't end in despair. Instead, it became a tale of hope, of a community coming together to support one of their own. Roger got the help he needed, and while it took time, he eventually began to heal. And Ricky, who had been so brave, found a new sense of security in the love and care of the people around him. St. John's City became known for more than just its peaceful streets and friendly neighbors. It became known as a place where people cared for one another, where a little boy's plea for help could bring a town together and make a real difference in the lives of those who needed it most.